What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you some fun speculation about what could be next for the Pathfinder video games. I want to start this off by saying that this is at best an educated guess. I have no idea, frankly, what they are going to wind up doing, but I do believe it's the safe bet that the next game will likely be from Owlcat Games, of course, as they've made the previous two, which have been quite successful. So as long as Owlcat Games wants to continue making them, they likely will. And furthermore, or they very much so seem inclined to go that way, as they've released surveys about Wrath of the Righteous DLC and how they can improve on things in the future, etc. They have more DLC for that game planned still. So the passion is clearly there, and I would expect more from them. Now, I do think there's an argument to be made that maybe they could make a Starfinder game, which is Pathfinder's sister game. And yeah, sure, maybe. But today, we're going to talk about what I would consider to be the two most likely candidates, in my opinion, for the next Pathfinder game, as well as some of the reasons I think these two are the most likely. Now, who knows? They could pull something out of left field and go in another direction entirely. There's a few other adventure paths I think would be really cool converted into a game, but for the stated reasons that I'm about to get into, I think these two are the most likely, and that is Rise of the Rune Lords and Iron Gods. So before we jump into this any further, I do want to explain if you're new to Pathfinder in general, they use adventure paths. These are very similar to the module released by Dungeons and Dragons. However, they tend to be like a six-part series. Paizo, the publisher of Pathfinder, does two of these a year. There are currently like 30 plus adventure paths. Some of them are actually a little shorter and they're only three parts. However, most of them are a six-part series. And the six-part series ones are pretty much always a level 1 through 20 adventure that takes you across the whole span of levels. So first up, let's talk about the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure path. Now, this particular adventure path sees us staving off the potential Rise of the Rune Lords. Who would have guessed? But what is a Rune Lord? Basically, they are ancient wizards who were masters of sin magic in a place that I believe is called Thassalon. Now, while it's called sin magic because it takes on the aspects of the uh, seven deadly sins instead of the typical wizard schools, you might also hear it referred to as rune magic. And as you might imagine, the rune lords were the best at what they did. And as you might imagine, there were typically seven of them. You can consider Rune Lord more of like a position or a title, if you will, than anything else. As there are more than seven total, some of them are dead, etc. These Rune Lords actually survived a cataclysmic event known as the Earthfall, which if you've played Wrath of the Righteous, you might have heard a bit about. But basically, it was an ancient event that kind of destroyed the planet and rewrote history, that type of stuff. But the seven Rune Lords that were in power at the time of that event hid themselves away and, for the most part, survived it. They left instructions to their followers to wake them up afterwards, but pretty much all of their followers died in the event. And as such, they just kind of remained sleeping. And the adventure path kind of deals with that. But why do I think this is a very likely one? Well, first and foremost, it's quite a popular adventure path. It is literally the first one they ever made for Pathfinder. Not the first one that Paizo wrote, as that company has a long and storied history, but it is the first Pathfinder adventure path. Secondly, in Wrath of the Righteous, you can actually meet one of the previous or current rune lords, however you want to think about it. And this is actually the Lich Alderpash, probably butchering that name, but we meet him in Baphomet's Ivory Labyrinth in Act 5 of the game. He explains that he's stuck here, pretty much, however he's afforded quite a bit of luxury. He's a Lich, so he has a phylactery, and you can actually kill him in Wrath of the Righteous. But my point is, is if they wanted to give us a good Easter egg for what they're working on next, this is a great way to do it, as, quite frankly, the Ivory Labyrinth is absolutely gigantic, so there was no reason they had to include this guy in the game, other than the fact that they wanted to. Because what we see of the Ivory Labyrinth in-game is actually a very tiny portion of it. It's meant to be almost a realm in and of itself. And then we have the second adventure path, Iron Gods. Now this adventure path is actually very interesting, as it revolves around the use of advanced technology, which might strike some people as strange. However, if you're unaware, Pathfinder has some amount of high technology in it. This is because there are crashed starships occasionally found, and there's a very prominent one in a country called Numeria. Well, with these crashed starships, etc., actually come very powerful AIs. These AIs are referred to as the Iron Gods of Numeria. And as you might imagine, the adventure path centers around that concept. With the added fun of all of the high technology and the back and forth surrounding its usage, etc., so pretty interesting adventure path overall. 
And if you are familiar with Wrath of the Righteous at all, or more specifically one quest in the game, it might be very obvious where I'm going with this. In Wrath of the Righteous, there is a place called Blackwater. You get a side quest to go investigate the place. Now, I do want to throw in a caveat here. This side quest, this area, was actually backer content from their Kickstarter campaign. However, the area is quite extensive. They made a lot of assets that back up the high technology stuff that the rest of the game doesn't really use. So they made a lot of assets specifically for this one area, which is not exactly an insubstantial amount of work to put into what was effectively a backer reward for a Kickstarter. Which leads me to believe that it is definitely possible that Owlcat could just be like, hey, we've got all these assets, why not do Iron Gods, the adventure path that would definitely use some of these assets? On top of the fact that, let's be real, following up Wrath of the Righteous is going to be a bit of a difficult task for Alcat if they choose to do it, of course. Because quite frankly, all the mythic power and the mythic paths that we had in this game are going to be hard to give up when we play the next one. And a fun substitute for those things, if you want to think about it that way, might just be high technology weapons, especially in a campaign quite literally designed for it. But there you go, guys. Two of the adventure paths I think that are the most likely that we'll see next in terms of video games. However, it's certainly possible that we'll see something else, or they might surprise us all as there are a number of really cool adventure paths that I think would make a great video game with some tweaks. Hope you enjoyed the video and the speculation. If you have your own ideas about what might be next or what you'd like to see them do next, by all means, drop it down in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe while you're at it. But more importantly than any of that, truly just thank you so much for watching. I couldn't do this without you. We are growing all the time. So thank you again. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.